So today we'll look at the difference between NURBS modeling, N-U-R-B-S, NURBS modeling and polygon modeling. Uh, I've been working in Maya for a long time now, off and on, you know, for about 17 years I've been using it. Um, and I've seen a lot of changes to the program over time. And I have to say, I'm an independent artist, um, not having really worked in a production team, so I can't comment on that sort of thing. And I'm a medical animator, so I tend to not focus so much on character animation, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, any type of work you do in Maya, it all starts with modeling. So you have to decide how you're going to approach your modeling. Back when I got started, NURBS modeling was a big thing. And these are all NURBS models, and you can see it's a great way to make uh, smoothly flowing curved surfaces. Um, so, for example, using it for organic surfaces, like it was used to make creatures. I think the first golem in The Lord of the Rings was a NURBS model. Um, but it's also useful for sort of mechanical organic things like car bodies and stuff like that that have curves but also uh, very defined and precise shapes. <clears throat> Maya has always had good NURBS modeling tools and they're still there. Maya doesn't get rid of anything. It just adds more stuff. That's why the program seems to be getting bigger and bigger all the time. Um, but these days, polygon modeling is more the norm, at least in my experience. And the reason for that is if you start with something like just a simple polygon cube, you know, it's a simple object. And if you want to make this have smoothly flowing surfaces, what we can do now is smooth or subdivide it. So if I hit three on the keyboard, then we can get a subdivided surface that can approximate the same sort of smooth that a only a NURBS model could really do with the compute powder, compute powder, compute power available at the time. So bottom line is we're going to talk about polygon models because that's what I work in. But I still use NURBS modeling tools to generate those. So that these are all NURBS models, but we can use these to um, generate polygon objects like this one here. I can smooth this and reverse it. So this is a polygon model, this is a NURBS model. They can look essentially the same, but the polygon model offers a lot of other benefits down the road. So let me just delete this thing. I'm going to hide this. And let's look at some NURBS tools. So the thing about NURBS models is that they all are essentially made out of um, a single patch. So this is the most basic NURBS model. It's just a square patch, or a rectangular patch, I should say. This NURBS cylinder is just that square or rectangular patch twisted around, and it meets at a seam. Same thing goes for the sphere. It's made out of a single patch. You can see it meets in this slightly heavier line here. This is its seam cone, same thing. So the bottom part is spread out down here. The, the top part of this plane would all come together in a single point here. Now this one you might think is can't be a single thing, but it is. This is just another patch that is um, that is uh, deformed to make this shape. The, the problem with uh, something like this is that uh, once you reach this limitation where you can only use patches to make something, it's difficult to make something that branches or maybe has a hole in it. Now, true, the torus has a hole in it. Um, but if you want to model sort of more organically uh, and sort of on the fly, then polygons are better for that sort of thing. So this is a polygon object. So it's a simple shape, but you can see that it can easily branch and you can easily add a hole into it. So if I wanted to do more of this, select a couple of faces and we'll look more at this later on, but and just bridge here. Then I can easily make a complex shape that has, you know, fenestrations, has branches. And for medical animation, of course, this is very uh, important 
as it is for any kind of animation. Now you can get similar effects by using NURBS objects, but to be honest, it's a big pain. Um, and just as the last example here, if we go and look at uh, a NURBS cube and a polygon cube, they look exactly the same, except the NURBS cube has to be made out of only four-sided patches. And so you can see it's actually a collection of four-sided planes. And you can move them out. And my scene is sort of evenly lit here. But you can see it's made out of just separate planes. And that causes problems when you're trying to make a, corp a more complex model. Polygon object, on the other hand, is a unified thing. All the faces are attached together. The vertices are linked by uh, edges and so on. So ultimately, because we can now subdivide easily to make smoothed objects with polygons, we're going to stick with these. Now again, other people may have different experience. But for me, uh, I'm going to stick to polygon modeling. However, like I said, there are some great uh, NURBS modeling tools that are really useful for creating polygon objects. And so if we look in the menu setup here, we've got all these menus that refer to mesh. Mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, and mesh display. These all refer to polygon objects. So all these tools have to do with polygons. For NURBS, everything is found here under this Surfaces menu. And right beside it, between the two, is the Curves menu. And this is important too, because all NURBS objects depend on curves for their creation. And if we're using NURBS modeling tools to create polygons, or polygon objects, then we have to learn about curves. In the next video, we're going to look at how to make items like these three things using NURBS tools, but they all depend on creating curves. So before we go any further, let's look at the structure of a curve. I'm going to hide all this stuff and turn on my grid. I'm going to do this in the top view here and I'll just go to create NURBS, sorry, curve tools and I'll use a CV curve tool. You can see there, there are plenty of other ones. But I want to draw a curve in one of the orthographic cameras so I know it'll be right at the sort of floor of the world here. And so you can see what's happening here is there are two parts of this that are being created because I'm using a CV curve. This outer hull that controls the shape of the curve and then the actual curve itself, this blue line. Let me just undo that. So what you'll notice here is if I click once, twice, three times, I just have the hull. No curve will appear until I click the fourth time. That's because this is a cubic curve, uh, or a cubic spline. Um, so it's trying to make a curved surface. So it needs at least three and then one more to start to draw the segment of the curve between. And every other one will just add to the length of that segment. So if I hit return, then it's finished. And if I right click and drag over to the left, then I can see the, whoops, I'll just change my background color, see the components of the curve. It's important to know that a curve has directionality. And so the beginning of the curve is defined by this square, hollow square shape control vertex. And then the next one is a U-shaped control vertex. And then all the other ones are just round dots. And you can see that I can move these around to change the shape of the curve. Now this is important because this shows the direction. If I had something like a circle and I look at the components of this, you can see that it starts here, but it's hard to know what direction it goes until you see where the U is. So it goes in this direction. And this directionality is important when it comes to modeling with curves because Maya takes this directionality into consideration in a lot of cases. And so the final thing to say is that this U is a U shape for a reason. It's because the distance you travel along a curve is said to be measured in the U dimension. So 
This is u equals 0 at the beginning. At the end of the curve, you're at u equals 1. So in the next video, we'll come back and we'll make some objects using curves.